It all started with a cartridge. In the 1930s, whether chasing down gangsters like Pretty Boy Floyd and John Dillinger, or taking game with your handgun, law enforcement and outdoorsmen found themselves undergunned for the task at hand. Elmer Keith, America's premier outdoor writer and wildcatter, and Phil Sharp, the time's most prolific cartridge developer, convinced Smith & Wesson Vice President Douglas Wesson and the Western Cartridge Company to develop and adopt the first Magnum cartridge, the 357 Magnum. The cartridge was based on an elongated 38 special case that wouldn't fit in the old guns, as the new cartridge could cause significant damage with its increased pressures. With the advent of the new cartridge, there had to be a gun stout enough to handle such a load. Thus, the Smith & Wesson Registered Magnum was born. The Registered Magnum is the pinnacle of Smith & Wesson firearms. Each revolver was bespoke and handcrafted from tip to tail. You had the ability to choose anything you wanted. Barrel lengths from three and a half to eight and three quarter inches. Blued or nickeled. Your choice of front sight, rear sight, grips, trigger pull weights, and even grip adapters. They would even sight in your gun with your specific ammo with either a six o'clock or a dead center hold. You wouldn't get more bespoke even when commissioning a suit on Savile Row, though this was truly a custom gun. There are a few common things that all registered magnums have. All guns are based on the large end frame design. This frame is beefy enough to handle the increased pressures and heavy enough to make the gun easy to shoot. All had hand checkered top straps to reduce the glare. This feature continued on to the gun's later predecessors, the Model 27. But really, what made this revolver unique was how Smith & Wesson handled the registration of this gun. In addition to the serial number, each gun was stamped with an individual registration number. With each gun came a card, and when filled out and sent in, Douglas Wesson himself sent a hand-signed certificate confirming the owner's name, registration number, custom features of the gun. Crazy enough, nearly half of the cards were never sent in. Only 5,500 registered Magnums were ever made from 1935 to 1939. One of the reasons was it was the height of the depression and most men couldn't afford a $60 sidearm. And secondly, the cost to build and register these guns got way out of hand. With all that as primer, you might understand why these may be the most coveted Smith & Wesson of all time. In our upcoming August premiere auction, we don't just have a few registered Magnums, we have some of the rarest pieces ever assembled under one roof. Here are a few of my favorites. Starting with one of the earliest guns on the table is actually an ultra-rare pre-registered Magnum known as a club gun. Well, what is a club gun? It was actually manufactured prior to the registration number for testing. These guns are known to have a zero prefix and were normally loaned to shooting clubs or shooters as test samples. According to the factory letter, this gun was shipped with a six inch barrel and checkered walnut grips. It was shipped to M.H. Bingham in 1935. Bing was a lifelong employee of Smith & Wesson and he worked many shooting events with none other than Douglas Wesson himself. He also was on the Smith & Wesson shooting team. This gun was later engraved, rebarreled, restocked for Bing's long-term protege, Charles McGowan. McGowan commissioned many of the Smith & Wesson engravers to gussy up this revolver, to leave their own personal touches and create a truly one-of-a-kind piece. How often do you see a game scene engraved on a Smith & Wesson? It's a first for me. This is a rare gun amidst rare guns, a circumpunct at the center of the rarest of Smith & Wessons, a club gun, reworked and engraved with a game scene by some of the finest and most prolific engravers in Smith & Wesson history, stocked by none other than Al Gagne 
the head honcho of Smith's stocking department. You will never see another gun like this. This is as good as it gets. As you can imagine, registered magnums were extremely popular with lawmen of the time. This documented revolver is one of 869 manufactured with a 5-inch barrel and was shipped to the Pondera County Sheriff's Department in Conrad, Montana. This gun is made even rarer by the McGivern front sight, deep U-notch rear, and the adjoined grip adapter. The gun's grips are numbered to the gun and it even sports a cockeyed hammer. Sheriff D.S. Welker was the recipient of this majestic six gun and the specifications are listed and confirmed on his certificate. The Magnum comes with impeccable provenance and a ton of extras, such as the original certificate, factory letter, shipping tube addressed to DS Welker, the factory box, and all the documentation pertaining to the procurement of this sidearm. This gun, registered Magnum 4597, is an unmolested piece of history, well documented, and definitely has the look, feel, and provenance you need in your collection. Here is an extremely rare Magnum, registration number 303. It's one of six documented registered Magnums with a King's rear peep sight. On top of that rarity, it is one of only 735 models equipped with an eight and three quarter inch barrel. Rarity on top of rarity. It is also sporting a luminescent blued finish and has walnut grips. The accompanied factory letter notates it was shipped August of 1935 to So Hardware Company in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Along with the factory letter notating its embellishments, it has the original box. This is a true hen's tooth. Condition, configuration, and rarity are pillars of the collecting community, and no matter what the platform, register number 303 fulfills all of these. It's a true pleasure just to have it in front of me. If rare configured registered magnums are what you're looking for, have I got the gun for you. Registered magnum 2517 was shipped to Roberto Gonzalez of the National Armory of Mexico in Mexico City in 1937. It is one of eight equipped with an eight and a quarter inch barrel, and it is the only registered magnum with ivory colored polymer grips known as Tuscoid. This gun also features a marble bead front sight and a deep U-notch rear. This gun has a large Smith & Wesson logo on the side and a tiny Marca Registrada marking, which was used on revolvers shipped to Spanish-speaking countries prior to World War II. Talk about rare! One of eight in the barrel configuration and the only documented pair of Tuscoid grips. It doesn't get any rarer than this. If storied guns are your thing, the next two guns are going to knock your socks off. This is one of the first 357 Magnum revolvers ever produced. It was produced for testing and evaluation of the cartridge and the firearm for both the military and the FBI. This gun is a test gun and it was never assigned a registration number. It is one of two prototypes assembled in March of 1935 and delivered to the U.S. Armory in Springfield, Massachusetts. After testing, both guns were returned and used for more testing by other agencies. This revolver was shipped to the sales representative Harold Kurtz in Washington, D.C. for promotional use. This gun never returned to Smith & Wesson. The fine revolver wound up in the hands of FBI's leading firearms expert, Franklin Bauman. Bauman invented the quick draw ramped front sight, that long sloping front sight that was fit to this gun and many more for drawing fast and snag free from a holster. In 1937, Bauman had the barrel shortened to four inches and his sight put on it. This is confirmed by the note from Bauman to Douglas Wesson requesting said changes. 
This gun was eventually sent back to Smith & Wesson in 1970 and now shows the refinish mark added to the cylinder and the grip frame. Bauman had a storied career in the heyday of the FBI. He was friends with Hoover since Hoover was in law school, and Hoover was actually the best man at his wedding. Bauman was the FBI's third in command and oversaw the 1933 Kansas City Massacre. This is an NRA silver medal winning gun. It is currently darned with roper grips, which I personally love. You can see this revolver in the standard catalog of Smith & Wessons, and it comes with a great amount of documentation and has been in many fine collections, including the collection of Mr. Ray Cheely. This gun has been there and done that. In fact, Mr. Roy Jinx himself states perfectly how important this gun is. This is certainly the revolver that helped to make the 357 a popular handgun with law enforcement agencies. Last but not least, what I view as the most important gun on the table. Registered Magnum 4467 was also ordered by FBI agent Frank Bauman. However, it wasn't for him. It was ordered for Agent Birch O'Neill. O'Neill was in government service for over 30 years. He started his career as a special agent for the FBI, but went on to be employed by the Department of Justice, the Department of State, and the Central Intelligence Agency. For over 12 years, he was employed by the Foreign Service and stationed in Latin America, Europe, and even Africa. In 1947, he became the CIA station chief in Guatemala. But after butting heads with the government, after the government's involved overthrowing of the president, he went on to work counterintelligence for John Angleton's ultra-secret special investigations group. O'Neill controlled the agency's file on Lee Harvey Oswald from 1959 to 1963. Oswald's moves were documented in more than 40 reports, and after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, O'Neill told the FBI they didn't know too much about Oswald. O'Neill was the first expert on Oswald. He was the CIA liaison for the Warren Commission, and his name to this day is found on almost all conspiracy theories about JFK and the CIA. A letter from O'Neill's daughter is yet another piece of history linking this revolver to him. His name is also marked on the bottom of the grips. Registered Magnum 4467 was ordered by Agent Frank Bauman for Agent Birch O'Neill with this three and a half inch barrel, a Bauman front sight, a square notch rear. This gun, accompanied by the factory letter, certificate, shipping tube, and factory box are all included. The story and documentation of this American man of mystery make this gun an amazing prize. Imagine O'Neill jet setting around the world, running agents, doing things we can only see in movies. All with this registered Magnum 4467 on his hip. England's gentleman spy carried a Walther PPK, which is pretty cool but America's James Bond carried a three and a half inch Smith & Wesson registered Magnum, and that's way cooler. From the ultra rare high conditioned registered Magnums to these elite provenance sidearms of the unsung American heroes, have we got the piece to take your collection to the next level. And they're only available right here at Rock Island Auction Company.